Hi there, Laserinos. J.R. Rawls here, wanting to answer the question of the week. What is the game that best defines the decade for you? Before I do that, though, I'd like to provide a little bit of perspective on that question. So let's take a quick gander at some popular games that started previous decades, and then look at some popular games that ended those same decades. First up, we have the 1980s, which were ushered in with Pac-Man and ushered out with Golden Axe. Now, at first glance, you can look at the graphical differences between these two games and realize it's quite large. But if you dig a little deeper, you'll also see that Golden Axe had a story. Golden Axe had boss battles. Golden Axe had levels radically different from previous levels. Uh, and finally, Golden Axe was a cooperative multiplayer game. Now, not only is Pac-Man none of those things, but no game had those things when Pac-Man first came out. So the changes that someone experienced in those 10 years as a gamer were large and radical, and any game that you choose to define the decade of the 1980s would have to somehow straddle those huge differences. Next, we have the 1990s, which started with Super Mario World and ended with Super Smash Bros. Now, Super Mario World was an improvement on the 2D games that had come before it, but Super Smash Bros. was 3D in a way that no game was when Super Mario World came out. In the current year, it's hard to express just how breathtaking the transition to 3D was to gamers who had experienced nothing but 2D gaming before, except for workarounds like Mode 7, but those really don't count. Uh, but as this quick clip from a preview of Mario 64 shows... Actually, the controller. By selecting pressing up on the control stick, Mario will begin to tiptoe. By pressing up further, he'll begin to creep. Still further, he'll walk and jog and sprint. This will also be a percent degree control, which you can see is quite fine. While you're watching these demos, I'd like you to notice how incredibly crisp and clean the graphics are. The change was huge! Massive! Literally, it took people's breath away. So, any game chosen to define the 1990s would have to be a game that somehow straddled the radical change that was switching from 2D gaming to 3D gaming. And the 2000s? They were ushered in with SSX and ushered out with Batman Arkham Asylum. Both of these games were in 3D, but Arkham Asylum not only had better 3D, but it was an open world game that let you explore and interact with that world in a way no game ever had when SSX was released. Furthermore, you could buy Arkham Asylum digitally instead of physically, could buy DLC for it, and developers could and did make a patch that automatically fixed various bugs for users after the game was released. None of those things had really been done for any game when SSX was released. You could even watch a video on the internet of people playing Arkham Asylum to decide if you wanted to buy it or not. Again, something not true of any game when SSX was released. So any game chosen to define the 2000s would somehow need to straddle the huge expansion 3D gaming underwent in that decade, as well as the significant changes that the internet brought to gaming in the 2000s. And finally, we come to the 2010s, which were ushered in with Red Dead Redemption and ushered out with Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Fallen Order is a large, open-world 3D game with a variety of characters to talk and interact with and many things for the characters to see and do. People can watch other people play it before they decide to buy it digitally and can decide if they want to get any DLC for it. And every part of those two previous sentences could be said about Red Dead Redemption 1. I can see an argument being made that I'm cherry-picking the 2010's games, but I welcome anyone to come up with a popular game released in 2010 and a popular game released in 2019 that shows the same amount of change as my examples from the 80s, 90s, and 2000s showed. I don't think anyone will be able to, as the changes gaming experienced in the 2010s was significantly slower than in any decade before it. And that's okay! Despite the best efforts of generations to make 3D films or smell vision change movies forever, nothing in cinema has fundamentally changed the medium as much as going from one-minute gag reels to full-length movies did. 
or from going from silent films to talkies did, or from going to black and white films to color films did. There has been refinement in cinema since the popularization of color, mainly in digital effects, but not a real revolution in film in almost 80 years now. And until slash unless VR takes off, I'm not sure we'll see another revolution in gaming in the 2010s either. As such, to finally answer the question of, what is the game that best defines the decade for you? It's Skyrim. And the reason? Because it didn't revolutionize any major aspect of gaming, but it refined various aspects very well. Was it the first open world game? No, but it refined the open world genre pretty well. Were its graphics unprecedented? No but they were a very good refinement on previous graphics. Did it invent DLC? No, but its DLC was a good refinement on previous DLC. Was its digital distribution and multiple reissues vital to get gaming to where it is today? No, but it's a good example of why things are how they are. So yeah, for me, Skyrim defines gaming in the 2010s, not because it changed much, but because it didn't.